Let's see how to go from something like this. Something more like that. This is going to be a short video, thus it's gonna be a bit of a superficial explanation. If you want to go a bit more in depth about the stuff we're about to discuss in this video, check the playlist link down below which is full of tutorials I made about how to write orchestral music, which are longer and more in depth. Let's start with the main melody. Now as usual, I don't like to only use one instrument to carry a whole melody, so I use three. A piano, French horn and solo violin. As for the piano, I left it entirely as it was written by Sheet Music Boss. What I like about this is that on the highest octave you have the melody and on the lowest octaves you tend to have uh, chords and harmonizations and stuff like that. Here those harmonizations go much lower so now you kind of in the second half of this passage the piano brings a sort of, sort of like a warmth and a bass that wasn't there before. So that's cool and I wanted to replicate the idea on the whole orchestration. So we're gonna see the second half is gonna sound way more intense than the first half. I added a solo violin on top of that. Now, I use the solo violin for three reasons. First, solo string instruments sound way more precise. So if you write like fast melodies like this one, it's not gonna sound blurred as much as an ensemble. Second, the violin is among the, the instruments with the highest timbre in the orchestra. So we're gonna hear that very clearly in the mix. Third, they sound very thin compared to what's about to come. In the second half, I wanted to go for a more bold sound. So I used the French horn in this case. And uh, also another thing I did is here in the beginning you have this passage. I used that rip to pre-announce the fact that the French horn is going to take over the main melody. Okay, the melody is there, but we're definitely not close to the final result. That's because we lack three other fundamental aspects. Harmony, bass, and percussion or rhythm. Now, harmony is added in two ways. You can either add counter melodies to your main melodies or add chord voicings. In this case, for example, I added this counter melody on solo cello that goes along with the main melody. Now, that's one way to write those counter melodies, because in this case, I'm writing them in an instrument that has a lower timbre compared to the solo violin, so it's not gonna steal the show. Another way in which you can go about this is write counter melodies that play when the main melody is resting. So that's the case for the choirs here. And that's cool because here they do this sort of staccato that is a very interesting accent. And at the end of the second repetition, they merge the main melody. Uh, you can do counter melody when the main melody is resting, but you can also do a counter melody with the same exact rhythm as the main melody, just different notes to harmonize. So that's what I did with the French horn here. There's another patch that is doing this. I also have that going on in the trumpets. I think it's the same notes, but when you add different brass, brass instruments like that, like French horn plus trumpets, you get a brighter tone because of the trumpet. There's also a bass trombone doing this. And that gives this brass section way more definition than it had when I only used French horns. I also have some violas. Now the track is missing the boldness that I wanted to have in the second half compared to the first, and that's because I still haven't added any bass instruments. So I added double basses, cellos and tubas to solve that problem. These are called pizzicato notes. This pizzicato articulation is the one where you pluck the string instrument rather than playing it with a bow. It sounds more round, more soft. I use this one because in this track, these bass notes, which are taken from the piano, are kind of rowdy and moving around a lot and they're kind of fast. If you write fast notes with low instruments, that's gonna muddy your mix up very quick. So if you use pizzicatos, that's gonna make it a bit more sustainable. The cellos are doing this. And on the tubas, I'm doing the same exact thing. For the same reason that I use French horn and trumpets together, I just want to have a broader sound by merging different timbres. So if we layer all the bass instruments together, we get this. Now this sounds more interesting. We got the melody, we got the harmony, we got the bass, but still I feel like we lack something that makes it sound cool. And that is tension. Now to solve that problem, I added this arpeggio on cello and many different instruments. Let's see how it sounds on cello.
The idea is I wanted to have something that creates sort of like a rising tension, like a riser does in electronic music. So repetition and variation can help. As you see, this sort of arpeggio is the same, but then it variates a little bit. And then in this second half, after a certain point, it goes to a higher octave, and then there's a variation and this scale at the end. This scale is a very bold way to end this statement that makes you understand as a listener, this is the end of the section, something new is coming. That is what more beginners need to use in their music. Some instruments, some elements, some risers that tell the listener a big change is coming. I did that by using cellos, but also first violins, second violins, flutes and glockenspiel. Basically, this arpeggio evolves through time and in time it's going to get to higher and higher tones until it's very, very hearable. So you can be sure now the track is way more intense with that. Now the last thing we need is some power, rhythm, and also accents, and I usually use percussion to provide all of that. So in this case we have some timpani taking over in the second half. It's an alteration between rolls and normal notes. Now the normal notes follow the same notes as our bass lines on piano and everything else. That's because timpani are a tonal percussion, so you can use them to enforce your low end this way. And uh, as you see, it's not too many fast notes because it's such a bold instrument that you don't really want to write fast notes or you're gonna blur your mix and muddy it up. But with snares, you can totally write faster stuff and I did here. Then yatti and cymbals. It are pretty much determining the, the, the accents of the track. Whenever you use these sort of sounds, the cymbals and the piatti, it, they're gonna open up your track and uh, thus they're gonna make everything sound way more amazing. And then I also have some tubular bells kind of following the melody here and there. All together, this is how the track sounds like. Shout out to Shit Music Boss for asking me to orchestrate this piano track they made. It was a lot of fun and I ended up using 10,000 notes in the full orchestration. Obviously, because of its size, I couldn't talk about every single aspect of it. Thus, I want to leave you guys a resource if you want to analyze the full orchestration by yourself in your DAW. I'm gonna leave you the project stamps of this track. You can get them if you subscribe to my newsletter through the link down below. So I hope you can learn something out of this video and I hope you're gonna learn something out of the orchestral stamps that you can get down below. That's it. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye.